The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Adventure, Justice Wears a Blindfold. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Hey, Clicker, where are you? Close that door. Don't you know any better than to let light into a photographer's dark room? You and your silly snapshots. I have important news. Yeah? Where are you? This black is pitch in here. Can't see where I'm going. <laughs> You bumped into a pile of equipment. Will you come on out of this place? All right. No harm's been done anyway. Small thanks to you. Come on, bring your camera. I always bring my camera. Mm, I'm glad to be out here where I can see what goes on. That's what I want to know. What does go on? Plenty. The law finally caught up with Stefani. Slip Stefani? Don't tell me he's been arrested again. Arrested my eye. This time he's going on trial. You mean he won't wiggle out of this one the way he has all the others? There were no witnesses before. Hmm, sounds interesting. What do we do? Gunnigan gave you and me the assignment of going over to the courthouse. What for? Stefani won't be there. He'll be out on bail. We're not seeing Stefani, Clicker. No? We're going to find out who's going to be the judge in his trial. In an important trial like this, the Sentinel's got to cover every angle, and the judge is one of them. Not to mention the jury. Sure, but even in a jury case, the judge is plenty important. And you know Stefani. Gosh, Laurie, I hope he gets a judge who'll really treat him rough. Hey, Stefani. Can't you see I'm busy with my mouthpiece? Yes, Dutch, your slip's lawyer. I'm planning his defense. What slip lesson? Guess who's going to be the judge on your case? Oh, Grayson. What? Yeah, Grayson. I was hanging around the courthouse and one of the clerks in special sessions gave me the tip. Stefani, you sunk. Grayson is the toughest judge on the bench. You won't stand a chance before him. Is that so? He's dynamite. You know the kind of reputation he has. He's one guy that can't be fixed, Slip. I know all about Grayson. Slip, I'm your lawyer. Yes? If you want legal advice from me, I'm telling you, you might as well jump bail. Schiller's right, Slip. Take it on the lamb. I got the car waiting downstairs. Forget it, Dutch. You ain't got a chance. Why not? You'll get a 20-year sentence if you stay. I said I'm staying, Schiller. But, Slip. Don't be a sap, Stefani. Me blow out of town because of grace and nothing doing. I got a nice racket and I'm keeping it, see? You can't run it from behind prison bars. That's right, boss. Who said anything about me going to the gal? Well, where else are you heading with grace and judging? Now, get this straight, you two. This ain't no surprise to me. Huh? I knew Grayson was going to be the judge a week ago. Do you mean to tell me... And what's you... more, I ain't worried. I got this case fixed. Oh, no, Slip, who you kidding? Grayson's got a secretary, ain't he? Of course he has. That secretary is appointed through politics. Well, everybody knows that. Even a judge has got to hand out something to his party if he wants to get his job. Correct, Dutch. When a judge wants to get nominated, he has to make certain concessions to the political party. It don't mean nothing, though. They only do it because they got it. Grayson don't have much use for his secretary. Grayson don't, but we do. What do you mean, Slip? When my trial comes up, that guy's going to be working for me. And when he gets through fixing things up, well, Judge Grayson's going to have that jury on my side. <laughs> it's in the bag, all wrapped up and ready to deliver. Judge Grace is going to handle a Stefani trial. How about a statement from the judge? Now the judge's secretary says nothing to him. What's the judge's opinion on racketeering in general? I don't know. My editor's going to be sore if I don't get something. Well, they say the judge is busy. Hey, where are you going, Laurie? Come on, Clicker. We're supposed to see the judge. He's not seeing anyone. I thought so. Giving up already. Well, I'm going back. Who's giving up? I suppose you have another name for it. If you'll use those pretty little peepers of yours, you'll see that door down the side corridor. Sure, I see it, but what? That door, Clicker, is another entrance to Judge Grayson's offices. 
While those other news hounds are clamoring around the main entrance, we're going to sneak in this way. Don't tell me that's your own idea, Lowry. I bet you saw it in the movies. Never mind the wisecracks. Now faint. Huh? Faint, faint. Make believe you're fainting. Oh, I get it. That's our alibi for barging in the judge's office. Never mind the explanations. Get busy. Here's the door. Okay. Here I go. Hey, you don't have to put your weight on me until we get the door open. Excuse me. This lady passed out. Yes, yes, of course, Schiller. I know what to do. You don't have to worry, Schiller. <coughs> All right, Schiller. What? Who are you? Don't you realize this is a private office? Sorry, she fainted. Put her on the couch for a minute. You can't stay here. <sighs> she may be feminine, but she isn't frail. Uh, I hope I didn't interrupt your phone call. Phone call? Oh, uh, nothing important. Oh, where am I? Oh, she's better. Uh, get her out of now, here. Now, wait a minute, Creevy. You can't How do you know my name? Well, I, uh, I heard one of the men in the hall mention it. Uh, I guess I must have fainted. Your reporters. Get out. Judge Grayson isn't seeing any reporters. Creevy, what's wrong? Judge Grayson, I'm Lowry from the Daily Sentinel. How about the Stefani trial? He sneaks in with this young lady, Judge. Young man, since I have been selected to preside over Mr. Stefani's trial, I am not at liberty to make any statements. Well, how about racketeering in general, sir? As a judge, my sentiments on crime of any sort are well known. As for this trial, you'll have to wait until it's over. Sure, but I we... can promise one thing. This trial will be conducted as I have always conducted trials in the past. Strictly according to the evidence. Now you'll have to leave, both of you. Thanks, Judge. It isn't much, but it's a statement anyhow. Come on, Clicker. Hey, Casey, how do you like this photo? Where's Mr. Reed? Clicker, don't weigh that picture in my face. It's still damned. Sure, I just pulled it out of the hypo. It's a candid shot of Judge Grayson. I took it when he was talking to Lowry. The judge didn't even know Clicker was snapping it. Did you get anything from him about the Stefani trial? Well, you know, Casey, since he's going to conduct it, he couldn't very well give an opinion beforehand. But look at this picture. Get that expression on his face. Mm-hmm. He looks like bad news for Stefani, doesn't he? He was careful about his words, Casey, but he didn't think anyone would be catching his facial expression. And that's what makes it a story. You know what the Chinese say. In this case, yes. You mean the one about one picture being worth a thousand words? Yeah, now that that's cleared up, how about it, Casey? Where's the boss? Mr. Reed's at the ball game. Again? Oh, talking about me, Larry? Oh, hello, Mr. Reed. How was the ball game? I left after the fifth inning. The score is so lopsided it got dull. Mr. Reed, Lowry couldn't get a definite statement from Judge Grayson. Grayson? About what? The Stefani trial, Mr. Reed. He's going to preside. Oh, that. Well, if he won't talk, he won't talk. You can't expect it as long as he's going to be the judge. I took such a swell picture of him, too. Look, Mr. Reed. Oh, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad? It's perfect. Yeah, but what good does it do without a story? All the judge would say was that he'd conduct this trial as he has all the others in the past. Not very definite, is it? It's about as definite as a dictator's promise. Gunnigan thought maybe if we use the picture and the statement, that might make a story. The expression on his face is so strong that... Did the judge give you permission to snap this clicker? I, uh, no, not exactly, Mr. Reed. Then the Sentinel has no right to use it. Sorry, Miss Binney. Hey, Mr. Reed, you tore out my photo. We can use no picture for judge without his authorization. There goes our story. Without a picture, it's not worth a stick of type. Oh, we have a picture, Lowry. Huh? But you just There are plenty said... of pictures of Judge Grayson in our files. Look through them, Miss Benny. I'm sure you'll find one that's every bit as strong as this one. We can do that without getting into trouble. The night before the trial of Slip Stefani was scheduled to start, two men called on Judge Grayson late in the evening. Good evening, Judge. Creedy, what are you doing here? Who's this with you? You know Mr. Schiller, Judge. He's Stefani's lawyer. Can I see you for a few minutes, Judge? It's about the Schiller, trial. if you're here to discuss Stefani's trial, the answer is no. You should know better than that. It's, uh, it's about something else, Judge Grayson. Another matter entirely. Hmm. In that case, come in. We'll go into my study. I have a few minutes to spare. And here we are. Now, what is it, Schiller? Creedy, close the door. Judge? You're going to fix things so Stefani goes free. Why, how dare you discuss that? You'd better do as he says, Judge. I never had much use for you, Creevy. You're my secretary only because I was obliged to take you. Now get out, both of you. Hold on, Grayson. I'll have you put out. You're not calling the police or anyone, Grayson. First, we talk about Stefani. I'll have you disbarred. No, you won't. And you're not withdrawing from this case. You're the judge, understand? Schiller, I warn you. You decide in Stefani's favor? Or I'll have you thrown off the bench. Do you know what you're saying? Every word, Judge. It's ridiculous. Here. Look at these checks made out to cash. Why should they concern me? Look at the endorsement on the back. But I don't see They're why... They're endorsed over to you, Judge Grayson. And notice who signed them. Endorsed over to me. But Hanford and Young, these are their checks. You tried them both and freed them. Of course. The evidence was on their side. Sure. But Hanford and Young are both dead now. 
From these checks, it looks as if they bribed you to let them go. Where did these checks come from? I never saw them before. I'm your secretary, Judge. I took those checks and had them deposited to your bank account. If necessary, Creevy will swear that you knew all about them. It'll mean you're finished as a judge. Disgrace to you and your family. I... But it's impossible. Both Hanford and Young are dead. Checks are evidence enough. Schiller, all this will do you no good. I'm only the judge. It's the jury that will settle Stefani's fate. You can do plenty, Grayson. You can fix it so that jury never has a chance to go to the jury room. Impossible. Pick on something the district attorney says. Declare a mistrial. That will only delay things. There'll be another trial. Don't worry. By that time, Stefani can take care of the witnesses so there won't be another trial. Besides, there's lots of ways for a smart judge like you who knows all the tricks of law. Influence that jury if you have to. Call a mistrial. Anything. I refuse to be a party to tampering with justice. You're on a spot, Judge. Remember your wife. She's not well. If you're impeached, the scandal will kill her. Yes, Emily. Her heart. Twenty years on the bench and now this. The great Judge Grayson. They won't suspect a thing. <laughs> We'll see you in court tomorrow, Judge. Keep your mind on one thing. That uh, weak heart your wife has. Stefani goes free or else. Sentinel Piper Sentinel! Stefani trial starts tomorrow. Racketeer goes on trial. But, Your Honor, this witness is important. The court cannot waste the jury's time with non-essentials, Mr. District Attorney. I do not consider this witness of any importance. Call your next. Holy cats, Clicker. Looks like Stefani's pretty lucky. He certainly had the best of it so far. Look at Judge Grayson. He looks like he's half dead. Several days after the start of the Stefani trial, Britt Reed burst into his apartment and spoke to Cato, his faithful valet and the only living person to know him as the Green Hornet. Cato. Yes, Mr. Reed. I've just come from the Stefani trial. Judge Grayson has just called her assassin until further notice. Looks like he's going to call it a mistrial. What is that? Oh, when someone tries to influence a jury indirectly by bringing in some matter which doesn't belong, it's a very technical point. Who done that? Well, that's just it. The district attorney mentioned something about Stefani. Usually, no one would notice it. But Judge Grayson immediately jumped on him and said he would have to consider a motion for a mistrial. Is that a bad? Cato, if there's a mistrial, Stefani will get off. I'm sure of it. What puzzles me is Judge Grayson himself. What's the wrong, Mr. Well, Grayson has lost all his old spirit. He looks like a man condemned. There's something behind this, Cato. It appears very much like an attempt to take unfair advantage of blindfolded justice. By who? That's just it, Cato. I don't know whether it's Stefani alone or whether Grayson is in on it, too. But we're going to find out. The mask, Cato, and the gun. Yes, sir. You go out of the green hornet? Cato, justice wears a blindfold. But in this case, she may be able to see the scales with the help of the green hornet. <laughs> story. When a notorious racketeer was brought to trial, the public believed he would at last be found guilty of his crimes. But the racketeer had brought pressure to bear on the judge in his case. He and the judge's crooked secretary had framed the judge so that he was forced to free the racketeer or be disgraced. When the trial was halted for the judge's decision, Britt Reed assumed his role of the Green Hornet to carry out the ends of true justice. Mrs. Grayson speaks to her husband. John, what's troubling you? It's nothing. 
Now, won't you please leave me? I have work to do. All right, John. I'm sorry to be so abrupt, but I must decide on this motion for Miss Trial tonight. Your secretary, Creevy, is outside. Do you want him? Creevy? No, I don't. John, you won't do anything that isn't right, will you? Of course not. I'm only doing my duty as a judge. I just wanted to be sure. Good night, dear. I could free Stefani right now so easily. And yet I know it isn't right. Then why are you doing it? What? Who? Who are you? If you free that racketeer, Grayson, you won't be worthy of the position you hold. You're wearing a mask. How did you get in here? Through the French door. If your motive is burglary, I won't. I'm not a burglar. Then why are you here? Grayson, have you ever heard of the Green Hornet? The Green Hornet? You're the Green Hornet? Precisely. What does that name mean to you? Everything that's crooked. You're wanted for every crime up to murder. Yet I've never committed murder. Don't try Nor is that all, Grayson. The Green Hornet has never committed any crime. Unless you call bringing criminals to justice a crime... The law takes care of criminals. Sometimes there are criminals who evade the law. And that's when the Green Hornet steps in. And that's why I'm here now. Stefani sent you here, didn't he? Whatever... Uh, perhaps you're right, Judge. Maybe Stefani did send me here. He's not content to hold those checks over my head as a threat. He sends you here in addition. What checks are you talking about? Don't pretend you don't know. Unless I grant Stefani a mistrial, those checks will be his means of having me disgraced. I'll be turned out of my position as judge. I'm beginning to understand. Blackmailer? Eh? Worse than blackmail. Those checks will convict me of accepting bribes, even though I never did. You're uh, entirely innocent of such a thing, is that it? Of course I am. Yet Creevy and Stefani between them... But why repeat all this? If you're in with Stefani, you're familiar with his scheme already. Who has those checks? Is it Stefani? Stop all this pretense. Answer me, who has those checks? My secretary, Creevy. If he carried them with him, I'd be tempted to use force to get them back. I see. He has them hidden someplace. His apartment, possibly. I presume You so. realize, Grayson, that it's your sworn duty to uphold the law regardless of any personal consequences that may follow? I'm powerless to do anything. My wife is not well. Any disgrace may be fatal to her. There's only one way to prove yourself an honest judge. Why are you talking this way? You said Stefani sent you. It was you who said that, Judge Grayson, not I. I'm here to aid justice. You and Stefani can't trick me, Hornet. I know very well you're here for one reason. To make certain that I carry out Stefani's wishes. Judge Grayson, I just came in to find out... Let me... Out of my way, Grayson. The Green Hornet! Out. Let me go, Grayson. No, you can't go after Why me. Why not? Isn't that creepy, your secretary? Please, if you go out there, my wife will see you. She has a weak heart. It might cause serious complications. In that case, Grayson, I'll follow Creevy another way. Through the French door the same way I came in. Thank heavens you didn't go out. But remember one thing, Grayson. Don't call the police. I won't. And whatever happens, keep this in mind. Nothing is going to halt Stefani's trial, not even you. His guilt or innocence is a matter for the jury to decide. I'm going to make certain the jury has that chance. What are you doing here at this time of night, Creevy? Thought you were at the judge's home. I just came from there, Stefani. Something happened. You mean Grayson's gonna let me out? No, it ain't that. Listen, Stefani. I walked into Grayson's study without knocking, understand? Sure, sure. <laughs> I bothered to be polite to him when we got him on the spot, huh? <laughs> That's nothing to laugh about. Do you know who was there? How could I? The Green Hornet. What? The Green Hornet? In with Grayson? I recognized him. That mask he wears. Just like the pictures in the paper. Did he get you? No, he started for me, but I slammed the door. I came over here as fast as I could. If the hornet's in on this, we better watch out. That guy's dynamite. You are not telling me anything new. He might blast our scheme wide open. But I can't figure it, Stefani. Who's he working for? All I know is he ain't working for us. We gotta do something, Creevy, fast. That's why I came here. Did you bring them checks? Oh, don't worry about them, Stefani. They're safe in my apartment. Yes, Seth, what do you mean, safe? As long as that hornet's around, nothing's safe. Yes. Yes, you're right. What shall I do? Get over to your place and bring the checks back here. Okay. I'll call Shell and have him start putting more pressure on Judge Grayson. We gotta have Grayson set me free in a hurry before something goes haywire. Once Grayson declares that mistrial, you're all set, Stefani. Never mind that talk. Get moving. For all we know, the hunter may be at your place right now. After trailing Creevy to Stefani's place in the Black Beauty, Britt Reed stayed only long enough to watch Creevy enter. Then he spun the wheel and headed for the secretary's apartment. Arriving there before Creevy, he picked up the telephone. Who are you calling, Miss Beth? I'm calling the police, Cato. I want to get some news to them before Creevy arrives. Meanwhile, you get busy and give this apartment the appearance of having been burglarized. Pull out drawers, upset things. Yes, sir. Hello, police department. I got a little tip for you. Slip Stefani is going to try to jump bail tonight. And never mind who's calling. Watch Stefani. He's planning to run out on his trial. Time enough for me to act before the police face this phone. Is Stefani run away? Well, Stefani doesn't know it yet, Cato, but he'll try to run away very soon. 
As soon as he learns that we have those checks. Shall I look for them, Mr. Brett? Oh, we won't look for the checks, Kater. We'll let Creeby locate them for us. They're the first things you'll look for when he sees how upset his place is. I'll put out the lights and we'll wait for him to arrive. Brett Reed and Cato hid themselves behind the drapes in Creeby's apartment. Then a short time later... Quiet, Cato. Someone's coming in. Gotta find those checks before anybody gets at them. Where's that light switch? Ah. What the devil? The place is in a mess. The Green Hornet must have been here already. If he found those checks, the game's up. Look in the drawer where I kept them. Why, why they're here. The checks, just like I left them. Huh. Well, I guess the Green Hornet didn't have anything to do with this. And over those checks, Creepy. The Green Hornet! That's exactly right. You recognize me in Judge Grayson's study. Who are you working for, Hornet? For Justice Cravey, but you wouldn't understand that. You can't talk to me that way. I'm Judge Grayson's secretary. You're a crook, Cravey. You're working for Stefani. But this is one time you won't get away with your little plan. How do you know about it? Never mind that. Are you giving me those checks? You want them, Hornet? Try and take out! Tell me, Cravey, your aim was bad. You take it! Yes. I can't breathe. Uh, he's out. Yeah, I didn't figure on using gas on him. I thought he'd surrender those checks without any fuss. Your yeah, checks. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, they're made out to cash, deposited in Judge Grayson's account. Yeah, there's no doubt that if these were made public, it would mean the end of Grayson's career. That mustn't happen. That's up to Grayson himself. If he can't decide to do the right thing, regardless of consequences, he doesn't deserve to be a judge. I'll keep these checks handy. I see. We'll see Grayson presently. First, I'll call Stefani and let him know what's happened. He's expecting a call from Creevy, so he may be a little surprised when he finds out who it is. Hello? Stefani? Yeah, who's talking? This is you, Creevy? Ah, uh, this isn't Creevy, but I'm calling from his place. Why don't Creevy call? Put him on the phone. That's impossible. You see, I just had to give Creevy a shot of gas to get uh, certain bits of paper from him. Creevy's been gassed. Hey, who is this? Who's talking? This is the Green Hornet. Oh, you kidding? What's more, I have those checks. The game's up, Stefani. You're finished. No, listen, Hornet. I'll pay you for them checks. I'll pay you plenty. Only don't give them to Judge Grayson. You'd better start running, Stefani. There's a long stretch in jail waiting for you if you don't. <laughs> He'll start running, all right. Directly into the hands of the police. They'll make sure he doesn't get away from his own trial. Yes, sir. I'll be interested to learn how Judge Grayson acts when he finds that Stefani has attempted to skip out. <laughs> When the news of Stefani's attempt to jump his bail reached the ears of the reporters, they immediately rushed to Judge Grayson's home and clamored for a statement. Stefani got nabbed by the cops trying to get away. How about a statement from the judge, Mrs. Grayson? Will this make any difference in the motion for a mistrial? Here's Judge Grayson now. Emily, what are these reporters doing here at this time of night? Judge, Stefani was just caught trying to leave town. Does that mean he has inside information? The only reason he'd leave would be if you decided to continue the trial. Is that it, Judge? I cannot give my decision on that until court opens tomorrow morning. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to my study. But, Judge... Mrs. Grayson will show you out. Good night. We'd better be in court tomorrow, Laura. You said it, Clicker. You'll have to leave, all of you. All right, come on, Clicker, let's go. I can't understand it. Why should Stefani do a thing like this when he's sure of his release? Perhaps he isn't sure. What? You? You've come back again. What is it this time? I've been waiting here in your study, Judge, while those reporters were outside trying to interview you. Is this more of Stefani's work? I don't know what you mean. He isn't fool enough to try to jump bail while he has those checks. Suppose the checks were gone. Suppose they weren't in his possession any longer. But that's ridiculous. Is it? Look here. If Stefani thinks he has me in the palm of his hand completely enough for a farce like this, he's mistaken. He's gone too far. What are you going to do about it? You weren't pointing that gun at me. This I'd... gun is used only for my own protection. I can't afford to be captured. I can well believe that. You haven't answered my question yet. How about Stefani? Does his trial go on? If it's any of your business, Stefani's trial will go on. Even if it means your disgrace? Do you see this envelope on my desk? Yes. That envelope contains my resignation. I wrote it an hour ago, before I knew Stefani was going to run out. Why? Because I decided that Stefani's case would go on. After that, I shall resign. This envelope contains my statement. Open it up. Why should I? And if you won't, I'll open it for you. Look inside. Why, that's not my resignation. It looks like... These are the canceled checks. The ones Stefani threatened to use against me. Where did they come from? I put them there. You? 
I came here to make certain Stefani's trial would go on. You read my resignation. While you were outside with the reporters. That resignation was proof that you intended doing the honest thing, Judge Grayson. Proof that you refused to aid lawbreakers. I always shall, no matter what the consequences. And that's why I removed that resignation, Judge Grayson. There's no longer any need for you to resign. I, I don't know what to say. How to thank you. Burn those checks, Grayson, and you'll have nothing to fear. As for thanking me, I'll... I'll have all the thanks I need when Stefani gets what's coming to him. He will. The jury will see to that. <laughs> is a copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated.